everyone good evening so my name is Tarkesh. i'm from qd42 i'm a ux designer mostly but i also deal with ui design and uh, we are a full digital service agency in india and today i would be talking about designing for privacy where you balance your user needs and data security and we will actually find out how one could balance both of them without compromising the UX of a digital product. And uh, a small disclaimer also, uh, I am speaking for the first time outside of India and uh, I might stutter at few places, so please bear with me, okay? So the content basically what we'll be covering is uh, what is data privacy, uh, you know, most of the people have d different perceptions of what data privacy is actually about. And uh, we would be also speaking about user expectations of digital products and uh, how to balance user needs and privacy. So in here, this particular section, I would be talking about a case study for UNICEF LAHA. So it's an initiative. So LAHA is a virtual safe space. It's an initiative by UNICEF. Uh, which aims to support, uh, you know, gender-based violence in emergencies. So victims of gender-based violence in emergencies. And uh, how we have actually built out a feature for LAHA. And uh, so in this particular case, uh, we had a, a very different or, uh, you know, exceptional uh, pain points from the users of LAHA platform, and it's only for girls and women in conflicted areas. And uh, we'll, I'll also uh, tell you about how we have actually found that balancing factor between uh, data privacy and uh, still maintaining uh, and tackling the user needs. So without uh, waiting any further, I would like to get started. And I would like to have a few minutes, uh, so I'll let you read uh, how users perceive uh, what data privacy is. So what data privacy means is that, you know, it's the protection of personal information and uh, management of how data is collected, shared, and used. So one thing we have to keep in mind is that uh, we are speaking in terms of UX right now, and from design point of, point of view here, uh, it's not only about how data is collected and stored, it's all about how you also ask for the personal information or uh, you, how you're informing the users how the data is going to be shared and used across. So a famous uh, you know, statistics by Edelman revealed that 81% of the consumers consider data privacy as their fundamental right. And uh, there's also another statistics which says that, uh, you know, it's from Global NGO Technology Report, which says that 92% of the NGOs right now are uh, concerned about their data privacy. And it has been a growing concern across the NGOs. And, uh, you know, actions are also being taken by the organizations and the NGOs to tackle this. So this gives us another question, which is that, does data privacy actually prevent a better user experience? So let's see what users expect from the digital products. So all that user needs, users needs is that they want usable products which are reliable, fast and performant, accessible, and which are personal and contextual as well. So, as we all know, all these factors make a good user experience. But one might be actually thinking, what do these factors have to do with the user data? 
So now we can actually relate, you know, the search suggestions which you usually see in Google and any other search engines, they actually use all your personal user data which will enhance the user experience and make it more efficient. And this is how uh, usually, uh, you know, organizations use the user data to enhance the user experience. And another example is that accessibility features also can be enhanced with the user data, such as, you know, themes and color schemes and sizes which help uh, in increasing the accessibility or maybe personalizing the accessibility uh, for the digital products. And there's also personalization, which is a major feature where every other digital product builder will actually rely on the personal data or the user data, such as you know providing specific locations uh, and uh, building more more contextual information and uh, personalizing blogs and content based on their uh, user interests and data. So now that we all understand that user data is quite important in making a good user experience. And uh, so all these uh, are the factors of good experience. So to meet all these factors, we would need good amount of user data. But can we actually meet the user expectations without having to compromise on the data privacy? So let's just recap what all we have covered until now. So a quick recap is that we have established user needs are nothing but they all need a good user experience. And we have also established that for designing a good experience, we will need some kind of or some amount of user data. And we've also you know, perceived from the statistics and uh, growing concerns ab around the privacy is that uh, users are actually uh, considering privacy as their fundamental right as well. Hence, to satisfy the user needs, we have to you know, design experiences which doesn't compromise the privacy of user data. But how do we actually design experiences which satisfy both the user needs and the data privacy concerns? So for that, we'll have to find a fine balance between user needs and the data security without compromising on the user experience. So I will actually tell you how did we find that balance while we designed a user forum for Laha. So Laha is uh, what I've mentioned earlier. So it's a UNICEF's initiative to find gender-based violence in emergencies. So before jumping into how uh, the nitty gritties and uh, how we have actually designed the forum, I would like to tell a few words about what Laha is actually about. So Laha is a safe space for women and girls and it aims to provide information and services on sexual, reproductive health, and gender-based violence. And it aims to you know, promote all the resources for women and girls in a very safe, culturally appropriate, and accessible to adolescent girls and women. And it also has information in a very fun and creative and a positive ways. So the challenge is that we had to build a user forum to find support, ask questions, and seek answers and services. Because until now, what Laha does is that it's just one-way communication. So UNICEF usually puts up the resources uh, on Laha platform, but there's no two-way communication right back from the users. So hence to tackle that, we had to build the user forum 
which we have envisioned to kind of give a peer-to-peer -peer support through the platform. And uh, what was our approach was that, you know, it's, we started off with the design process, which is uh, the user research. And uh, in the user research, we've done some desk research about, and uh, we've kind of understood what kind of users are we designing this for. And so we've conducted some workshops uh, with, you know, the stakeholders of UNICEF and as well as uh, with the uh, users as well, the prospective users. And uh, goals, we, al we also understood that uh, what goals, uh, short term and long term, UNICEF wanted to achieve with the forum. So basically, uh, we have understood uh, and kind of divided the personas uh, while we have we started to design this forum. You know, we've kind of understood the, the there's an age group of girls that we have to design, uh, for 12 to 14 years, and there's also another age group of girls where we had to design for 15 to 17 years of girls, and then there's also teenagers of girls and uh, adult women as well. Now, so having understood all this during the discovery phases, you know, then we started out with uh, conceptualizing the features for all personas. And basically, we have started with the wireframes, and uh, this is a prototype which you're seeing right now. And, uh, you know, after putting down all our ideas uh, based on our findings uh, and the wireframes, we have actually tested out with interactive prototypes in Lebanon and Venezuela. So these are, uh, you know, the prototypes that we've built and we built in multiple languages so that we still maintain relatability with the users. And so based on our testings from the real users, uh, we've kind of iterated uh, the designs and it's still ongoing uh, project right now currently. We are in phase two, which we are, still iterating uh, with the forum users. And I would also like to mention that we are not deep, deep diving into the process. So I'll be covering mostly the insights about the data privacy and the user experience expectations of the platform. So the main insights, what we got was low digital literacy users. And uh, since we are actually dealing with users who are from conflicted areas and uh, they don't have a lot of digital literacy uh, using uh, digital platforms and we also had to deal with, uh, you know, very low internet connection and we had to deal with, uh, so these were the major pain points of the users. And another important pain point is that confidentiality of the users because we are trying to give support and information to the users or the victims which who are uh, who are you know uh, actually took some actions against gender violence uh, gender based violence in emergency so confidentiality user uh, confidentiality of the users was the most important uh, insight that we have got because in most of the cases, if a woman is seeking help, there might be a good chances that their relatives might actually see what they are trying to put up on the internet. And uh, there were actually few cases where we heard from the users while we were doing discovery that they might actually face a life threat. And uh, due to the nature of the product that is Laha, Usually sensitive topics are discussed and uh, sensitive topics resources are also shared by the UNICEF. And there's also a good amount of chances that there'll be unsafe device usage as well. And there'll be also abusers of the platform since this platform only caters for girls and women. Now, based on all these major insights for related to data privacy and the user experience, 
I'll be sharing a few features that we have designed uh, which can tackle uh, these insights. So this is how we've actually designed the forum to be. So for tackling the low digital literacy users and confidentiality of the users, we've kind of gathered zero personal information. But you know, all of you might be wondering actually, how did you even manage to design and build a forum without using personal data? So we started off with you know, ideating on how we could actually solve this, you know, keep the confidentiality of the users, but yet give a peer-to-peer -peer experience. So we thought you know, we can actually use random names. And Drupal has really helped us here. Uh, we have customized the user registration process of Drupal and to process and prioritize the user anonymity. And we've also considered the challenge of account recovery here. So because since we are not having any kind of personal data which is being taken, neither emails or neither uh, mobile numbers, so, how, so we had a challenge of how to actually recover an account when, in case a username is being forgotten. So we came up with security questions. So that was quite simple, yet effective. So we have built up a set of security questions at the Drupal backend, uh, which could be used uh, across uh, various domains because Laha is actually personalized for countries and regions and uh, based on different ethnicities as well. It's not a single domain that we are using all across the world. So it is actually customized for country specific needs. Then since we are not using any kind of personal information, we wanted to understand how do we still maintain relatability and personal feeling for the users while we are not kind of having any uh, personal information being taken. So we wanted to have avatars. So avatars could be customized uh, based on the countries and the ethnicities as well. And for tackling the low digital literacy of the users, we had to give out contextual information and guided tours. So everywhere across the user forum, we had designed to be as descriptive as possible, and we've given out guided tours all across the site. And you know, be it from asking a question, sharing your answers, how one can actually do that. And this is actually accessible with a very low internet access as well. Now, you know, most of the websites you see or the platforms, uh, they have a very small checkbox saying that, you know, you can read our policies. But it was not this case uh, in, for this platform especially because we have to educate our users about what were the policies. And uh, we have actually embraced these policies. So we've given out uh, on the home page and all across while registering as well what uh, were the policies and uh, we have actually informed the users uh, and uh, we were actually uh, very transparent as well while we, are, while we wanted to build trust within the community. So we've also sent, set out you know, uh, guidelines. It's not one huge sheet of guidelines one could actually read. So we've kind of distributed these policies into separate uh, or small sections of uh, guidelines which could be accessed at various points, touch points uh, across the platform. You know, There would be a specific guidelines while asking the question and there would be specific guidelines while commenting and so on and so forth for registering as well. Now since we are dealing with sensitive topics and we also wanted to maintain the confidentiality of the users and we also had a threat of there would be a perpetrators of abusers. Hence we set up a very robust moderation policies. So every comment, every question that would be posted from Blaha would be first moderated. And these moderators would be from 
UNICEF who would be going through every question and comment before it is being posted to the public. And you know, one of the example I've shown you here is how the dashboard for the users would be looking. So this is, this is one of the questions which could be you know, in review and uh, questions which are rejected and we also embraced why was it rejected and how could uh, such a question could be published by giving out uh, certain factors which could help them in coming up with the question or rephrasing their question. And we also had reporting as a feature because you know we also thought there might be few instances where moderator could actually miss a certain question or a certain comment which could be uh, threatening for someone else. And that is why we had come up with reporting and uh, we wanted to swiftly address these privacy concerns and enforce the community guidelines with the reporting system. Now that I come from a design background, I'm not so much into Drupal technology, but uh, we kind of understood how Drupal could be used to further enhance all these security processes that we could do. So we've used text processing and filtering of Drupal, so which was actually instrumental in you know, finding the sensitive words and eliminating these sensitive words, and these could be flagged at the moderator's admin. Now, these are few security modules we have used because uh, there was also a concern where, uh, you know, there, uh, the session limit has to be uh, tweaked. It's not like every other website, you know, you still maintain a session. So we've used uh, session limit settings. Uh, we've also used SecKit, that is security kit. And uh, we've customized all these settings to enhance the user experience, yet balance the privacy concerns of the users. So these were uh, you know, few features we've used uh, across uh, Laha user forum. So it's not very difficult to, you know, to balance the data security and the user needs as well. So all we need to understand is this. User needs are nothing but they need a great experience. And we also understood that we need some amount of user data while designing for a good experience. Hence, from a simple math equation, we can safely say that user needs can be balanced when you design keeping the user data in mind. So basically, you know, for an uncompromised experience, which satisfy both the user needs and the data privacy, which is only achieved when you design for privacy. So the balancing factor for both user needs and user data is when you, de when you design for privacy. And basically, privacy shouldn't be an afterthought. It shouldn't be like, you know, after testing out, you know, there are some privacy concerns and we have to go back to the design or drawing board and we have to figure out how to solve that. But it should be essentially a component of the design process itself, which, en which ensures that user need and data security co coexist harmoniously. And that's my topic actually, where designing for privacy you can actually balance user needs and data security. So it's a good, so for a great experience, it's a result of combination of user data and design. And this could be only achieved when you consider and design for privacy as an integral part of the user experience. So that is my session actually. I would like to answer any of the questions you have, guys.
I have some T-shirts here, uh, which and uh, and some amazing stickers as well. And we are at booth 24. We are QAD 42 from India. We are a full digital design and development services. And if you guys have any other questions or related to tech and wanted to know how the tech was implemented, we would be more than happy to answer at our booth. Hi. So you mentioned that there was low digital literacy in yeah. that region. So apart from what you mentioned, what all you did, like basically segregating all the tips uh, throughout the process and so that there isn't a huge page for them to read. Is there anything else uh, that you uh, basically included in the process? And as a designer, do you see, did you feel any difference from how you usually design websites and specifically in this case? Like I would like to know some insights on that. Like uh, was it a different experience and how did, did you learn anything new or anything that we as a developer can understand from the design yeah. perspective? Yeah. Okay, so basically, we have kind of come up with new workflow. It's not that you include your developers in the design process. It's after you finish your designs, you hand off to the developer, and then there might be some hiccups where the designer says that it could be actually done, but technology-wise, it's not possible. Hence, to tackle that, we have actually used the design, uh, the developer's instincts and uh, feasibility checks right from the starting of our design process. So while we have envisioned certain features, we also wanted to make sure that it's actually quite possible with Drupal or any other technology. So that is how we've kind of maintained relatability of what we are envisioning and is it really possible to build the features. You can actually come here, yeah. It's very short, okay. Hi. Yeah, thanks for the talk. It was great. Um, so Thank I you. just had a question really about um, uh, the clients, effectively, in this case, UNICEF, right? Yeah. Um, have you ever had to deal with situations where, say, for example, the client's KPIs are in conflict with the, the user's expectations of data privacy? So UNICEF had a very high standards of KPIs, to be frank. And uh, we have actually done usability testing for around three to four times, maybe, just to balance their KPIs and yet balance the user expectations. So that is uh, all done after our wireframes and uh, the prototypes are done. And that is how we have actually kind of balanced both UNICEF's KPIs standards and the user expectations as well. Of course, we have to back down on few things just to satisfy the use, uh, UNICEF's KPIs. But uh, we've kind of found a middle ground uh, based on our uh, testing and iterating to satisfy both the user's needs and uh, UNICEF's KPIs.